So just one example, habitat prediction. What is the habitat of a particular species of bird? And where will this move in the future? Next. We have produced several different resources for mathematics, for mathematics teachers who are looking to teach applied mathematics. Because of course, what is the number one problem teaching mathematics to the students? The students say, what is this good for? Why are we learning this? This has nothing to do with the real world. Right? GIS connects mathematical topics to the real world. Geometry and topology and several different types of mathematics to real world problems. So we have a series of exercises for mathematics teachers. And they've been very excited. And I should say that in the United States, uh, currently there is higher growth amongst mathematics and science teachers than geography teachers. We have higher growth in, in science and mathematics. And that's important to us. What's next? Language arts, teaching English, teaching Portuguese, utilizing GIS. How is the language evolving? Who speaks Portuguese uh, in different places in the world? How has the language migrated over the years? Uh, if we're reading a novel, where is the novel taking place? Where is the author born? How is the author's uh, point of location related to the, to the literature? So there are a series of people who are producing exercises to teach language with GIS. But this is my favorite. This is my favorite. Um, at the Ohio State University, they are organizing their choreography and managing their choreography. Here we have people who are jumping up and down on tables, right? And so, of course, the, chore the choreography has an order. And it has an order in space and in time. And every dancer needs to be in the right place at the right time. So next. So what they do is they put small white dots on the articulations of each dancer. So there's a white dot here, and here, and here, and here, and here, and here. And then they film. They have video recording from above. And they're recording where all of these people are in space and in time. And they utilize ArcGIS to analyze this. And so here we have different colors for each different dancer. And they analyze the patterns in space and time. And they say, oh, at this moment, something happened. Something went wrong at this moment. So we have to fix this. So curiously, the big football teams are also doing this. The football teams that have all the money, the Liverpools and the Chelsea's, they're doing this also. Because they want to know, where's the ball, and where are our people, and where's the other team? And they analyze the game, and they say, uh-oh, here something went wrong. So we need to fix our defense. This is an example where it's not geography, it's space. And almost everyone works in space and has problems in space. Next. So at many universities now, and I'll show you three examples, at many universities, and this is the first, uh, first example is University of California, Santa Barbara, they have created a program which covers the entire campus. And they have said, we're going to talk about space. Not about geography, about space. And they have brought together all kinds of different research groups that work with space. Social science, satellite imagery, a digital library, some kind of uh, um, interaction laboratory in computer science, nanotechnology, spatial thinking lab, cognitive psychologists. And these people talk about space together. And they have meetings, and they have conferences. And they utilize GIS in many different ways. Next. Stanford University, I think you're familiar with. Stanford University is a, a, one of the best, one of the um, most excellent universities, private university in California. At Stanford University, there is not one department that has GIS per se. So there is not one big, strong department that has lots of GIS. At Stanford, it is being controlled by the libraries and information resources. So Stanford has, in their library, lots of GIS for everybody. And so any professor can say, I want a little bit of GIS, please. I want to, I want to make one map, or I want to do one analysis. And so the library and these people help them to work. Next. The same is the case for Harvard University. Harvard has a center for geographic analysis. 
The Center for Geographic Analysis at Harvard University is also not in any one particular department. It is a horizontal center which provides, using the site license, provides software to everyone who wants to use GIS on the Harvard campus. Now the director of the center is an expert in Asian languages. Not a GIS person, per se. Not an IT person. This is someone who decided that this was interesting for his research in Asian languages, studying China. And so he created this laboratory, and we support this laboratory, and they're doing interesting things across the entire campus. Next. So I think that's another of, of the main messages. This is the future of GIS, is that it's spreading across society and across the campus. And one of the ways that you can utilize our software, the ArcGIS software, to make this happen is utilizing ArcGIS Online. And you'll see a demonstration in a few minutes. ArcGIS Online is the ability for any GIS users on campus to create a group on the web for free and to start publishing their data. We have a nice map of Sao Paulo. We have a nice map of the soils. We have a nice map of transportation. We have a nice map of students in the field who are collecting points. And you can start publishing this data, free online storage, and then other users can search. Hmm, does anyone have soils data for Sao Paulo? They can search these groups and they can find, ah, yes, another department in my university has already done this work. So we can utilize their data. And then we can create new data and we can share data to the other departments. Thanks. So ArcGIS is growing, as I said. There are free applications, such as ArcGIS Explorer, which allows anyone in their home or at the university to access the data for free. Um, there are new viewers or, or there's software to allow the creation of viewers so that on the internet you can create a new sort of mini GIS using these new languages. And much of this is freely available for people to utilize and to create programs. So this is important. These are not extras that cost money. These are extras which have been facilitated to the wide community so that GIS can spread more. Yes. And this is one example of many. This is the National Geographic. You know National Geographic, the magazine? National Geographic Society has a series of small GISs on the web called FieldScope. And so they have taken our Flex programming environment and they have created small focused GISs. And here is the area around Washington, Washington DC, the capital. And there are a few different layers that can be visualized. But more importantly, there are some functions here, some analysis. So you can ask some serious questions. For example, here I can ask a question. If there were to be some kind of a, a spill, if there were to be an accident with liquid, some sort of toxic liquid, where would this liquid go? And the, the GIS can tell us it will go here and then it will reach the ocean. So this is an example of a very simple GIS where on the, on the web, there's nothing to install, nothing to learn, nothing to buy, and the operations are happening in the background. ArcGIS server is creating this analysis capability and allowing people to function without needing to become GIS experts. Um, the mobile platform, very interesting for students, allows them to use different mobile devices and to be out in the streets or in, the, in uh, rural areas capturing photographs, capturing data, and sending the data back to the central database and, and, and synchronizing, moving the data back and forth from the database to the mobile units. Many of these applications are also free. So you're going to start seeing more and more millions of people utilizing a small bit of GIS. So as I said, we're continuing this loop and we're starting to make more decisions and making small actions and contributing more data to be contributed. And so more and more and more our database of what we know about the world is growing and growing and growing because we have more millions of people who are able to do this. And so it's a little bit like the web. When the World Wide Web was created in 1994, it wasn't very interesting because there was not very much content. However, when people were able to create their own HTML web pages, then suddenly the content went exponentially. 
And this is what is happening with geographic information. Historically, I couldn't collect geographic information. That was only for the government. And I, need, I, and I, 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 was, re I was required to wait for the government to give me a new version. But now I'm in the field collecting my own geographic information. And my colleagues are creating information. And we're sharing information. And so the, 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 the quantity and hopefully the quality is going exponential. And that's very interesting for us.